So welcome back to 2021. This time I'm taking a look at one something I haven't looked at for a while, which is input latency tests. I did want to cover this in a longer form video like I did a few years ago for the PlayStation consoles and the Xbox consoles. Here I'm doing it again with brand spanking new consoles to test. So here, the Series X and the PS5 are going to get to the root of the problem of how they run, how input latency is affected, because it's a big drive for these next generation of consoles, both from low latency options, VRR, and obviously higher frame rates in those 120 FPS modes. Whoa, 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 slow down there. Before all that, a word from this video's sponsor, and that is Boost Gaming, an online digital store that allows you to buy in the UK or the US and top up your wallet and spend all that good digital cash across your Xbox, P, PlayStation, or even Switch consoles. By using the link below, you support the channel and help me out, but you still get the best value possible from the site. So go on, grab yourself an Xbox, PlayStation, or Switch, or other top up wallet, and enjoy yourself. So first things first, let's just quickly summarize what my methodology is, which I've covered before in previous videos. What I do is I take an Xbox or PlayStation controller, I rip it apart, and then I wire up a single LED to the circuit board internally. And then when I press a button or move a controller and that circuitry gets a pulse through it, it lights up my LED. I film that with a 240 FPS camera, and then when the light lights up, I then wait and see when the action on screen changes and then I count up the frames and work out that input latency. I then deduct what the screen actually input latency is and that gives me the final engine output. I then do multiple tests and do the medium of those and that's what you will see on the graph. That's the green line at the front, that's the most important one, the median, the most likely input time you'll get. And then I also show you the high at the back in blue just to give you a summary of where they can vary. And some games do have quite a big variation there and certainly every Every single game has a huge variation in terms of action and input time. So moving the camera or shooting or changing weapons, all of those things can be vastly different between, you know, three or four times slower on certain actions. The other thing to take into account is the screen itself. I'm not going to touch on it here. I've done a whole video around that. My most popular one in terms of setting your TV up, but obviously you have to set your TV up properly. If you do not, you will have a huge amount of input latency, which these figures take off. So it will be much, much higher if you don't set your TV up correctly. And as, as an example, HDR modes on TV screens, when you default to a standard one, they're set up really for video. So if you don't play around with those settings and configure them properly, uh, some of my tests here, which I'll cover in another video, you can actually gain 150 milliseconds on top of the input time you're getting in game mode. So, so just bear that in mind. But again, like I say, we'll cover that in a future video. So moving into the operating system times, this is obviously an important part, and it's been a few years since I've tested this before. So both PlayStation and Xbox have been patching and updating their operating systems, improving latency, improving controller times. Obviously, both controllers can be patched with a newer firmware basically the BIOS and therefore improves the times or changes some of the functionality so we can see now that the Xbox One S is much closer to the PS4 coming in at 72 milliseconds as a median 76 as a high uh, and then the PS4 is a median of 57.4 with a 59.5 so basically 60 milliseconds as an overall so the PlayStation 4 is still faster than the Xbox One S but they've certainly improved it like I say though the main menu themselves the front end with all the online store and the graphics and the fonts and everything else that slows it down they're all much 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 slower with the Xbox console being the slowest of the lot and Windows generally is just getting worse and even in the PC space there's just loads of problems now so there is a massive inconsistency there when you're testing these so I've not dwelled on that because from one test to the other it can vary massively so moving into the PS5 and the Series X, you can see consistency, they're much, much faster. And obviously the Delta is much smaller. Give or take, it's it's one frame difference between them. So the median is 59 and it's 55 on the PS5. Just for completeness, I've also tested the USB mode, which is almost exactly the same. It doesn't make it any faster. All it does is it makes it more consistent because the polling rate is more consistent from Bluetooth, but you're not really going to notice it. So don't worry about plugging your USB cable in and then swapping to USB on the PS5, just like the PS4 it doesn't really make much of a difference. So that's the operating systems. It gives us a baseline. It gives us a, a level to expect. So 55 milliseconds is pretty low for the PS5 and 59 is very low for the Xbox Series X. So all that is very good. Like I say, generally both versions and both operating systems, PS5 and Xbox, have work to be done here and can be improved and will be improved over the course of the lifespan. So 
there's definitely areas of improvement here but moving back into the games the most important part so let's compare the last generation to the new generation so where best to start than a cross-platform title assassin's creed valhalla this was an odd one an odd very odd result overall obviously dual modes now to be tested here so the full graph shows you all of them i've highlighted the top section here for ps5 and series x at the top and in the bottom you've got the ps4 and the xbox one s and as you can see the xbox one it actually outperforms the ps4 here in input latency and i retested this to make sure but yep it's absolutely true 132 milliseconds versus 113 milliseconds as a median and this carries over exactly to the series x and the ps5 in that 30 fps high quality mode the series x is much faster than the ps5 115 milliseconds with the ps5 coming in at 153 so the input latency is lower on average median across the board Obviously, this is completely mitigated by jumping over to that 60 FPS mode, which was designed for out of the gate, and therefore you get 67 and 61, much, much closer, but the PS5 is still slower than the Series X on input latency, to the tune of around 6 to 7, 6 to 8 milliseconds overall. So that's not an insignificant amount in terms of input latency, but you're never going to notice that when you're playing the game, but you certainly can notice it on the 30 FPS mode. So the reasons here are unclear, but in all likelihood, with the dual development of Xbox, PC, and then the next generation versions, it's a DirectX issue, and potentially there's an easier port in the SDK from PS4 to PS5 that's not BC, but it's not fully developed in the SDK to take advantage of the hardware, and therefore there's a little bit of a wrapper penalty or an overhead penalty for that to run. Again, that's surmising, I'm not saying that's fact, but like I say, the 30 FPS mode, there's definitely a difference. And that difference carries over again between the console both generations on the watchdogs legions title a 30 fps title no matter what obviously the ray tracing is added in the next gen versions but the xbox one s and the ps4 are very close again but on average the xbox one s is just slightly faster to, again to the tune of around five to six milliseconds and then the same delta between the ps5 and the series x around 10 milliseconds on the median means that we're looking at a similar situation at that 30 fps but it's much much closer now that might be the overhead there's obviously less things going on in the engine in terms of Assassin's Creed Unity it might also be the fact that they're pushing a lot more in Assassin's Creed Unity in that 30 FPS mode like I say not 100% sure what the reasons are but there is definitely a delta in Ubisoft titles and it's to the advantage of the Xbox consoles not only in the Series X but in the Xbox One S as well and this carries across all versions here so you can see that they have definitely made improvements on the Xbox side to improve input latency and operating system latency and we're seeing those benefits on Ubisoft now when I'm saying about these operating systems and these difference between the development kit i'm not doing that based on no information at all because the other tests don't paint the same picture and the first one of those is dirt 5 another cross-generation title another title that has a huge amount of options for us to test and therefore we can give a good view of what's going on with the gdks the xdks and the sdk so everything that's happening with development and this is what i've said before there's many many factors when you're making software and certainly across platform just because it's running the same game and engine doesn't mean it's the same code base underneath and here we can see that the series x and the ps5 are flipped positions in the 60 fps mode the ps5 is almost identical to the ps4 in fact it pretty much is and so is the xbox one s in 60 fps mode but those 30 modes you can see that it's basically twice the input time you're adding on top with all the additional flourishes that 30 fps mode adds in terms of visual quality those options aren't available on the ps5 and the series x therefore we see a delta of around 12 to 13 milliseconds on the medium between the series x and the ps5 in that 60 fps mode and that's pretty big Again, in relative compute terms, if you're an aggressive online gamer that plays a lot and lot, you're really going to be sensitive to this, and you're going to feel that around 20 milliseconds you start to feel it. And then if you're just playing, you're more of a casual game, you're not that obsessed about this input times, then probably around 40, 50 milliseconds, that's when you start to feel the difference. Everything feels that little bit heavier. But the 120 FPS mode, which is there, solves all that. You can see both consoles are now identical in that performance rate, and you get a good idea of how much it, that 120 FPS mode, as I mentioned in my coverage of that game, how much you can feel it more than you can see it. So the leap from 30 to 60 is much bigger than the leap from 60 to 120. But again, the input time from 60 to 120 is pretty big. Again, nearly half, not quite, but you know, about 35 40 percent and that's a significant increase and that's what you feel consistency when playing the game 
And like I recommended in my review, that's why the 120 FPS mode is my recommendation for both racing and fighting games, because it feels more consistent, and that's true on Xbox Series X and PS5. But again, we can see that flip between the SDKs, the GDKs, however they're porting or developing the title, it looks like there's some cost here or some tweaking to be done on the Series X. But there's more titles to cover, and another 120 FPS mode version. Call of Duty Cold War is a great title because again it has that 60 and 120 FPS modes and we can test it across last generation and this generation and see what kind of input times we get and what kind of improvements we get when we leap up to that 8 millisecond frame time that 120 FPS gives us. And we see a similar situation to what we saw last time which is it's very close but this time the Xbox One S is the slowest of the lot in that 60 FPS mode but we can also see that superb input times this title is always known for and that that's one of the reasons why it's so popular because it feels so crisp and fast to play such a responsive title at all times and for twitch shooters it still leads the pack and is right up there with the best in the business so 60 on the ps4 and the xbox one s is pretty close it again it's around 16 milliseconds or a frame between the two of them uh, and that's been consistent across all my tests for all the games across the generations and in, in the years and then we move to that 60 fps mode on the newer consoles you can see it's even faster down to 42 milliseconds as a medium uh, and that's pretty close it's again it's around two two frames out or eight milliseconds out on the series x so two frames of my capture but the 120 fps mode again is even better there's not a lot you can get out of this that's probably as low as you're ever going to get from a title at this level 32 milliseconds is a medium and 36 milliseconds is a medium it's four milliseconds between them it's one frame you're never going to notice it it's pretty much identical and it makes the game feel superb in this mode in terms of control well, multiplayer is where you should test it and that's why I've tested this and that's where it feels the best to play and it really highlights that you know, like I said before the Series X Xbox have definitely worked on their input times and improving the overall latency through the system the polling rates the controllers and the operating system to bring it much closer than they were before and that's definitely coming from the new generation of AMD hardware which is helping them out and also obviously their SDKs because what we're seeing here is much closer levels between the consoles than we've seen before and it's good to see that Microsoft have also improved the Xbox One S. They're not deaf that behind. They've certainly improved the controller input there and the operating system and obviously the SDK. So we're getting better input times than we've had before. It's still look not as good as the PS4, but it's much closer than it was. And that's great because games are for playing. Therefore, it's all about the input time. After a certain point, you know, 10, 16 milliseconds, that kind of level, you're not really going to notice it. Once you get above 20, then it becomes apparent in terms of controller. Uh, and obviously, there's been some bad titles throughout the generation on both platforms where we've had input times that are a little inconsistent so there's nothing new under the sun here development of titles and games on different hardware always creates these kind of deltas so moving away from current gen and another big part of these consoles and that's backwards compatibility now I've covered this in depth already in my previous videos and some Series X ones as well but fundamentally they handle backwards compatibility differently the Series X and the Series S handles it very much like a PC, so it's all around the driver, the construction, the SDK, so it runs natively on the system and therefore takes advantage of the hardware at a much better level. The PS5 does a different job. It emulates it at a hardware level and then it has different stages of what it can emulate in terms of clock cycles, timings and everything else to keep that consistent by not having to manage that at an operating system level and therefore developers can still code as low as they possibly can using the relevant levels of the GDK and therefore they get much better levels GNM. So that's how they differ. Go and check those videos out if you want to know more about how that, that works. So that means that when we test these backwards compatibility games, we need to take that into account. And therefore, we should see some differences, but we shouldn't see a massive difference between the two because fundamentally it's as fast as the engine allows it to be. And therefore, that's what we see here. So some 60 FPS titles on screen, and we can see almost they're identical between the PS5 and the Series X. They run it as fast as they possibly can, better than the native systems because obviously all those hardware bottlenecks are out of the way and therefore we've got much faster processes therefore it's no longer limited by the hardware at times it's now limited by the software itself how fast the engine polls updates and rates the input from your controller and therefore we see this delta and they're pretty consistent jedi fallen order is a great example of a title that really benefits from backwards compatibility on both consoles and it feels much better to play and it's an excellent game absolutely one of my favorite of the last generation all those issues notwithstanding but we can see a difference here in one title, and that's Doom 2016. 
Now, the reason for that is because I tested this on the disk code. So both consoles can play out of the box straight away, disk code natively on the new consoles, there's no issues. But it's running the Xbox One version. Remember, this game was a game that launched in 2016, so it never had a Pro or it never had an Xbox One X patch. So this is running the code that the Xbox One was designed to run, and it was, it's running the code that the PS4 was designed to run. If you want to learn more about that, go and look at the video I did back at the time on the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X version that I did at the time that patch landed. And we can see input times are slightly faster. Not a massive amount, but there's certainly it's evident there consistently in both the highs, the lows, and therefore the median. But if we patch the title and we bring it up to the Xbox One X version, the PS Pro version, then we see that they're identical because they've actually made improvements to the Xbox One code and therefore improved the quality. This is a different part of the game. The title itself is different area, same test, but different areas in the foundry. So again, like I've been saying before, it's all relevant when you do these tests. You have to test an exact same point in the title. You can't just go and stand anywhere in the game and do a movement because the rendering load in a game is dependent on the frame itself, what's going on in the environment around you. So an input time can be different depending on where you are in a game and what's actually going on on screen. So you can see that you need to patch titles where there is a patch for Xbox One X or a PS Pro, then patch it because you're likely to get improvements as well. Unless, of course, it's something like The Last Guardian, which I covered as well, which then locks it to 30. But if you've got a disc version, you get that beautiful locked 60 FPS. So backwards compatibility is a big part of their overall uh, operating system. And therefore, if we move to 30 FPS titles, we see a similar example here. But one stands out massively. And again, this is a title that's been patched. So this is running the Xbox One X code on the Series X and it's running the PS4 Pro code on the PS5. But we can see a delta in those input times. And it's quite a big delta. It brings us all the way back to that, you know, it's 17, 18 milliseconds. And Red Dead is, like I covered before, it's one of those games that is designed to have um, physics-based animation at all times. And certain actions are slower than others. So this is based on moving the camera and obviously drawing your gun and then shooting your gun. Those, those actions can be different. But we are, what we're seeing is the Series X is faster. Now, from most of the tests, it's an outlier, so it's not something that's consistent, but it does show that when you've got this level of backwards compatibility difference between the two options, occasionally you can get these kind of areas where, like we've seen with some of the other titles, where um, text filtering is improved, resolution is improved, uh, and that's because you're not constrained by the direct engine. You can actually do more within the driver level and the operating system level that you can do on the PS5. There's, there's pluses and minuses both sides, so there's, there's no clear winner here. But when you've got a title like this, the clear winner is the Series X. It, it runs it better it's faster it's got slightly better input times and the ps5 is locked at the best quality it can get out of the ps4 pro version and therefore it's slightly slower again like i say with a title this slow it doesn't really matter you can't really notice it they both feel slow it's a slow title but it's an example of what i'm talking about in terms of when i mention all these development things and all the caveats and all the different ingredients of developing a title and even analyzing a title input time is something you need to take into account because Games can use it. Tomb Raider was a good example, last generation on the Xbox One. You can render frames ahead, so double buffering, triple buffering. The more frames you render ahead, the more consistent and solid your frame rate is, and it's an option. The downside of that is the more you render ahead, the, the slower your input times become. So Red Dead is using it on all clock platforms, absolutely, um, because it helps. And secondly, it's using it because it needs it for that physics simulation and the CPU. So if they did a patch or an update, which they won't, they'll do a remaster or something um, for Red Dead 2, I would be amazed if they didn't see a huge improvement in these input times alongside that. And that's because you cannot render so many frames ahead. You can actually improve the performance by dropping a frame. And therefore, if you're running at 60, that's at least 16 milliseconds you're going to take out of the pipe. And it might be even more because not everything within a render frame is linear. Therefore, going from 30 to 60 doesn't always cost you or save you that 100% improvement. So generally, what we're looking at here is a very close level of input times across the consoles much closer than it was last generation. The PS5 generally just pips the Series X, both from the operating system level and therefore on the game level overall, but it's it's pretty close between them, as you've seen. There's some, some wins and some losses.
losses to Series X and some wins and some losses to PS5. So generally, I'm very interested to see how both teams improve it. There's definitely more to come. There's a whole conversation around VRR and titles that use that in terms of improving frame times, but I'm not going to get into that here because it muddies the water. One, because there's so few titles that use it, and two, because it's just not available at the moment on PS5 because of the way they've constructed their hardware. So there is options to talk about that once it's available and I can get into those full tests, and I definitely will. But for now, this was a full look at both suites of consoles, how they work on both cross-generation, next-generation, high, high frame rate modes, and BC mode. So hopefully you enjoyed it, you found it informative, and obviously easy to follow. And always, if you like what I do, remember I'm completely independent and self-funded. So if you can support me or the channel, the first thing you can do is like the, the video below. That helps. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Getting my numbers up is a massive Im improvement for me. Comment below. Ask me questions. Give your feedback, whatever you need. And if you can, support me on Patreon because that really helps to improve my quality. And in 2021, I really want to try and strive to push this channel forward. So we'll see what comes out of that. Anyway, I thank you guys and girls enough. I've rumbled on enough. And thanks for getting to this point. And I'll catch you very soon on the next one. To the Empire. We're all just expendable. Yes, you are. Uh, uh, no! Uh, uh, Look at this. A lightsaber. Uh, uh, uh,